Now I'm interested in looking to see if I have any SIP errors in some VoIP trace files. I've opened up the trace file called tr-voip-extension.pcap-ng and this trace file does have some SIP errors in it. Now Wireshark does have a statistic available to quickly see SIP errors, but we're going to improve on that. If we want to use the built-in capability in Wireshark, we can go up to the telephony menu item and simply go to SIP. Wireshark will prompt us if we want to create a filter for this, and we're not going to, we'll just build the stats. And we'll see the SIP statistics window will populate, and sure enough we can see that we have some SIP 488 not acceptable here error responses. Now, SIP response codes are somewhat similar to HTTP response codes. Any response code beginning with a 3 would be a redirection. Anything that begins with a SIP code of uh, starting with 4 is going to be a client error. Anything beginning with a SIP code of 5 is a server error. And then we've got an extra set here, which is global failures. So if we're interested in SIP errors, we've got to tell Wireshark that we're interested in any time that SIP response code is 400 or higher. And that will get us client errors, server errors, and global failures. And it will be faster than opening up this window. So I'm going to close down this window. And the first thing I need to find is a SIP response code. So I'm looking for the line that has a response code in it, and I need to figure out what the name of that response code field is. So packet number three we can see is a SIP response. We have a 200 OK. We also have packet number two is a 100 trying. We could use either of those packets and expand the session initiation protocol section in the detail window. We're going to have to expand out the status line section as well so that we can have the status code on its own line. Once we do that, we can see the name of that field is sip.status-code. And this is ugly because up until this point, all of our display filters were always lowercase. And then with VoIP display filters coming in, suddenly we have initial uppercase. And that can cause you problems if you don't realize that some of the field names have upper and lowercase mixed now. So that I don't have to type it in, I'm just simply going to right mouse click and I'll say that I want to prepare a filter based on the selected value. I just use that so I don't have to type in the field name. Remember we're interested in errors and any SIP response code that is greater than or equal to 400 will be an error. You'll notice I didn't put a space in front of the 4 and 400. I don't need to put a space on either side when I'm using these symbols for my operators. But if I were using um, GE for greater than or equal to, I would have to put spaces on either side of the GE. I'll go ahead and apply this to test it out, and there are the two SIP error responses. Once I know this works, I can click Save and give this a name of SIP ERRS say OK. Now at this point I've run out of space on my display filter line to handle all of my filter expression buttons. And once that happens Wireshark will give you the double arrow on the right hand side and I'll bring my window in a little bit so you can see what happens. Notice how they disappear and that's because they're all listed in a drop down right here. And once you have used up all the space in the drop down area then you'll see a scroll bar show up so you can scroll through a list of your filter expression buttons.